All right. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, all across the globe, welcome to another edition of Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn and my wonderful guest today, ladies and gentlemen, attorney Cassandra Lynch. Attorney, how are you doing today? Good to see you. I'm well. <laughs> thank you for having me, Kevin. It's great oh, to be on. Oh, thank you so much. I couldn't wait for this time. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. She is busy lady, and uh, we're just excited about her uh, being with us today. Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you may, may, may want to know, hey, on Power Connections, we just bring in powerful people that know what they're doing. We're talking about professionals there like Attorney Lynch, and we're just excited about her uh, sharing some things with us. Hey, I'm going to be interviewing her a little bit today, but I want you guys to also check her out. She's a beautiful, beautiful website, guys. All the information is there. Matter of fact, her bio would take about a half hour right there alone. <laughs> So, uh, guys, I want you guys to do check her out, though, because we're going to talk about today the importance of a will uh, for you, for your family, guys. The second thing we're going to talk about is the living trust. I've heard that and know, understand a little bit about that, the living trust and who should have one, guys. And next, we're going to talk about uh, uh, business owners, guys, today, which we love the most. We love our business owners and families, of course, with employees. Uh, do they have tax advantages to help their businesses? We're going to ask Attorney Lynch to help us out in that area. I think a lot of people, Attorney, are missing some awesome opportunities uh, that are within the law that they could use, you know, each and every day. So, or each and every quarter or month, however you want to do that for sure. But Attorney, we always like our guests to say a few words yeah. uh, from their mind and heart. But, you know, so much going on today. We could talk about almost every topic from A to Z, as you know. But anything you'd like to share with our audience as we get started on Power Connections, with Kevin Vaughn and my wonderful guest today, attorney Cassandra Lynch. Thank you so much. Well, that was a grand introduction. Thank you again. Uh, thank um, just a little bit about myself. Again, my name is Cassandra, I'm attorney with Legacy Tax Advisors. I also am a partner with an uh, uh, international boutique firm by the name of Mithra International. Um, so I'll talk about those other services. But my main services that I do offer is wealth management. So I do work with our a lot of our small business clients to create their estate plans um, for their families. Um, sorry, just one moment. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so yeah, so I do estate planning, um, working specifically with trusts, wills, um, durable powers of attorney, healthcare directives, um, so and the like. So you know, anything yeah. that you need in regards to estate planning. Yeah. Um, aside from that, um, you know, heavily working with trusts. Uh, so whether if you need, you know, to create a trust mm -hmm. thereafter to fund the trust, and then also wow. trust administration. So do help with that as well. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, I am an international tax attorney, so I do yeah. assist yeah. international <laughs> um, uh, oh, tax boy. planning as well. So I, I yeah. kind of run the gamut here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I can assist with that. So anyone that's looking um, to sort of create um, or set up businesses outside of the U.S., that's sort of where Mithra comes in. We do yeah. um, assist clients with creating businesses, um, particularly in the Caribbean, to take a lot of um, the tax advantages that are there as well. And then also once people are creating their businesses in the Caribbean or outside of the U.S., yeah. that does open them up to citizenship opportunities. So we do oh, also wow. help with that immigration process. Yeah. Oh, that's powerful, attorney. I love it. Did y'all hear that, folks? She's an international <laughs> attorney as well. So what that means, ladies and gentlemen, she's not only brilliant, she's a, gen a genius as well. So I love that. That is so wonderful. You know, Attorney Lynch, what I wanted to find out is what drew you into this profession? That's what I wanted to hear, too. Is this something you always wanted to do from a baby? I know you're probably brilliant at it as a baby, too. But did you want to get into this area? What, what drew you into the profession? Well, maybe broadly the area of law um, or just law itself. I think I've been writing like school reports since I was 12 about being a lawyer. Oh, so wow. I started there. Really? Oh, that's great. <laughs> so when I was really young. um, So definitely, you know, we want to encourage our young students to yeah. kind of find their fields early because, you know, you kind of manifest that. And so, yeah. you know again um but in terms of this particular area of law estate planning which is interesting because you know I, i'm very young and so yeah. usually don't have a lot of people my age in this area of law but um right after uh undergraduate, actually, I got my first position as a, I think it was like a secretarial assistant, if you can imagine, even secretaries yeah. have assistants, so I was very yeah. low on the total pole. 
very yeah. low. Yeah. Um, and so I was working for their wealth management team. And so I almost feel like this area of law sort of found me because right. um, that's where I started. And it just has been um, an area of law that I really love, um, yeah. you know, especially, you know, just helping people, you know, now that they're, you know, getting, um, you know, they're yeah. getting older and so helping people with that and so I just really have um, a way to really right. you know assist with those kinds of um, discussions about yeah. you know uh, end of life and you know how to distribute assets and stuff so you know I, I think um, it's an area of law that's very delicate and yeah. so you know it's really important um, that you know we have the right people um, yeah. in this kind of field to deal with these kinds of issues. So. Absolutely attorney we applaud you I applaud you the network applauds you. That's powerful right there because you're not, you're literally helping the people and the areas that uh, most people won't, you know, need help in. But that's, some of that stuff is pretty complicated uh, as far as getting it right, you know, the first time and getting all the uh, re requirements and the benefits that the client needs, all that good stuff. But you got to know what you're doing. You know, Absolutely. there's a lot of laws uh, that yeah. people don't know about that your attorneys know about that helps us. And, and plus internationally, wow, I applaud you again yeah. uh, just on that because that's, that's almost two separate areas, the domestic and the dinner, and that's just two separate areas in of law. Exactly. Much. So that's wonderful. Hey guys, this is Power Connections. My wonderful guest today, Cassandra, attorney, uh, Cassandra Lynch later, we're talking about some powerful things today. Hey, I want you guys to go to our website, guys. Check her out for more information. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pop out of here. Get your cameras ready, guys, out there. Anybody listening right now, get your cameras ready. I'm gonna pop out just momentarily so you can take a picture of this wonderful uh, her background there so she can uh, you can uh, contact her a little later on because there's some information on the bottom there. Our guys, I want you to see that real quickly. I'll be in the background. Isn't that beautiful? I took it right from our website, guys. So uh, please uh, know she's a legacy tax advisor, LLC, building generational wealth with tax planning. Powerful area, guys. There's the information there that you can contact her on later on. I want you guys to go to Legacy Tax Advisor, uh, Legacy Tax Advisors LLC.com. That is the website. And you can see the other contact information there uh, as you need it. I would call her, guys, as soon as possible just for an appointment. But also, too, Cassandra, I want, attorney, I want people to know that they can also contact you to be on their show. You guys got any type of show uh, that requires this particular topic, please contact her as well. All right, so that's wonderful. Let me pop back in here. I love this technology allows me to pop in and pop out quickly, you know, without no big issues there. I love it. I love it. Well, attorney, let's get right to it because we got money to make, people to help, and we got things to do today, the rest of the day. I love it as well. Well, let's talk about the will. Yes. Uh, and any way you want to take it, attorney, because you are the expert here. I know we, we talk to families all the time, mom and dad, grandma, grandpa. Uh, aunties, uncles, all the above, we got to pay attention here. Tell us a little about what's needed today. In all the right. All right. So in your estate plan, there are going to be four documents that you really should consider having. So that is going to be your will, yeah. um, your trust, most likely going to be a revocable living trust, okay. uh, your durable powers of attorney, whether mm -hmm. that's going to be for uh, finances or for health care. Mm -hmm. And then we have the advanced healthcare directive. Now with that advanced healthcare directive, sometimes you can find that. Um, so it can be in two documents. So it right. can be like the durable power of attorney for healthcare yes. and then your advanced healthcare directive. Or nowadays you are seeing it in one document where you've got that power of attorney for healthcare and the healthcare directive wrapped up into one. So um, so these are very important documents. Um, I'll talk first about wills, but I'm happy yes. to talk about, you know, well, I'll talk about trust as well. But if you'd like me to talk about the other documents, how do you want to go? Yeah, however it flows, however you want to present it, it's great. Okay. Um, yeah, so a will is great. It's very important. What it does, it's going to detail your wishes, you know, what you want done with your estate um, end of life. Okay. So I actually get a lot of questions between what's the difference between a will and a right. trust. Right. And so um, it's very important to know because I don't, um, you know, I, I kind of little lean more, a little bit more to trust and, and right. I'll explain right. why. Um, but a will is very important in the case for families that do have minor children. Um, so if you have minor children, a will is going to be the legal vehicle, as we call it, that is going to designate a guardian mm -hmm. for your uh, minor children. So this is why this is a necessary document in your estate plan. Now, if you um, are someone that does not have children, then, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's that necessary um, next to a trust. Uh -huh. Now, the reason why we also want to 
couple our uh, state plan with a trust is because the trust is what's going to allow us to avoid the probate process. Gotcha. Now, probate is going to be the number one estate planning goal to avoid. Um, after that would be like uh, to minimize taxation and asset protection, right? So these are the three main goals for estate planning and particularly using a trust. Yeah. So we want a trust because essentially a trust, what it does, it, it kind of does what a will is that you've detailed all of your intentions and what you want to, what to do, what you want to do with your property and who you want to yeah. give it to. However, with the trust, we do, a, there's a second step that we have. And so we actually go through this process of transferring the assets and putting them in the name of the trust. Yeah. Now with the will, you just write the will and that's it. Right. And so a will will always be probated. So wills are always okay. probated and okay. they go through the court process. Okay. So, you know, and there's issues with probate court. One, it's public, it's expensive, um, it's time consuming. Yeah. So I always like to let people know that, that if you only have a will, your will will be probated. So actually in the case, if you don't have a will or mm -hmm. if you have a will, but in either of those cases, if you don't have a trust, your estate will be probated. And again, that is going, you know, you know, we really want to make this time for our beneficiaries and our loved ones, you know, um, a stress-free time. And so the last thing we want is them to, yeah. you know, you know, taking such a long time to get their probate. In fact, right. a, a simple estates can take three to six months, but right. a complex estate can take several years. Yeah, exactly. On average, we're talking like um, uh, one to two years for a complex estate. So you can imagine your beneficiaries have yeah. to wait all of that time right. before they receive anything from your estate. Hmm. Mind you, your estate will have to pay attorney's fees first. Yeah. They have to pay court fees. Yep. And then should you be in a state, that I, Kevin, I can't remember which state you're in, but if you're in a state that assesses a state taxation, your state will have to pay that out as well. So I'm right. barred in North Dakota. So thankfully North Dakota does not have estate taxes, but I did go to law school in Washington and they, they do have estate taxation. So yep. if you do find that your estate um, could be valued at, I believe in Washington state, it's like 2.1 million. Right. Um, you know, uh, you really want to make that consideration um, to also have a trust um, in your estate plan. So, so wow. yes, I did want to talk about a will. A will is important, yeah. um, but we do also want to make sure that we do have a trust because a trust is going to provide us that privacy. Yeah. Um, you know, once you create that, um, it, it's not public like a will, right? So because just yeah. by virtue of the will going to public makes it a matter of public record. Mm -hmm. And this is the issue there. Believe it or not, there are people who actually go through the obituaries to see right. who's passed yeah. just to stake a claim in court. And unfortunately, the claim could look frivolous on his face. Like this person yeah. clearly isn't a part All of right. our family or it's All a local right. right. cousin, you know, yeah. but the court has to hear every claim. And so this is the right. kind of things that slow down that probate process. Right. Wow. That's interesting. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, we are here with attorney Cassandra Lynch. We're talking about the uh, importance of a will. Uh, for our family today uh, and for your specific even if you even if you uh, I guess if you even if you're single or don't have you know don't have any family at all maybe I don't know if you still need a will or not but one thing attorney I wanted to ask about concerning the will how should it be documented I mean can I just write it out on a paper and sign it or does it have to be typed out do I have to put it in a word processor you know that type of thing how uh, can I dictate it on a digital recorder and certify it? I don't know. How does that all, what's the proper way to uh, document a will for okay. the future? Okay, so what you've um, just described in the beginning, writing it out, we call this um, a holographic will where you've written it out. Yeah. And these wills like this are accepted, no. um, but they do have to go to, they do have to go to court. However, right. Being an attorney, of course, we will always advise that you yeah. get it in right. writing exactly. with the um, legal formalities. And so those formalities are going to be um, having two or, well, I say two, depending on your state, can be two to yeah. three witnesses mm -hmm. observing the your signature to make sure that it's authentic. Right. Right. And then also um, a notarization as well. So this yeah. is going to be the legal formalities that you really want to have gotcha. with your will. Um, and so um, I, I 
I know uh, for a lot of people, perhaps, um, you know, finances can be an issue. Yeah, so it's absolutely. That you, you work yeah. with an attorney, you know, there's a lot of great online resources. Um, you know, I know Nolo's got willmaker.com and there's trust and will great resources out there. You know, you can draft your documents online. If you'd like, I always recommend to people, you know, you can do that, you know, as a way to save money, but then go ahead, have an attorney to review it for you. So that's mm -hmm. going to down the cost there. So at least just get right. that second opinion and an attorney to review that and then go and again, get those legal formalities where you are signing in the presence of however many witnesses that are required yeah. for the state and then having it notarized. So that is going to, you know, for if there's any reason that the will is challenged, right. that notarization is going to, uh, you know, give the evidence of the validity of your signature. And yeah. um, not that it just that you signed, but also that you were of sound mind right, right. signing. So, right. So this is one yeah. of the, um, the yeah. main elements. Absolutely. That's fantastic. You know, attorney, I was just thinking, I'm going to use me as an example. I got two beautiful sisters in upstate New York. And, uh, and my will, say my will is, is written out and everything and typed up everything. Now, do I need to have, uh, as far as witnesses and so forth, how many, can I have the witnesses and the notary there? Or do you have, can you have the witnesses sign and then get the notary? How's that, how's that process? Should it work properly? Um, yeah. So, uh, so everyone will be there, um, all together. Okay. Gotcha. And sometimes, gotcha. um, you know, perhaps if, if you're short gotcha. a witness, sometimes the, the yeah. notary can fill right. in to be right. um, a witness as well. Okay. Gotcha. Um, but yeah. So everyone there, you know, overseeing. Yeah. The, yeah. the document signing, as we call that's, it. That's great. Yeah, because one of the things I, I've heard in the past is that you don't want to get to court and don't have everything in order. You know, mm -hmm. you can at least know what the court's requiring, right? Exactly. And what required. So, guys, we want you to be prepared. That's what we want you to do. We want you to be prepared in advance. Understand if you're going to go through this process of setting up a will, we want you to know all the details of properly setting up because most people don't have that kind of money to go back and forth, right? Attorney, I know that. That's probably the biggest reason right there is the money to pay the attorney because you got to pay people, right? Mm -hmm. For the services that they uh, render to you. So do your research. Matter of fact, attorney, they can do their research before they even come to the attorney, right? Just to Absolutely. make sure they got their ducks in a row and yeah. then come to you for, you know, say, oh, you look good there. Let's get started on the rest of the process. That's, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. And I think that's important. Um, you yeah. know, I'm definitely in this to help people, yeah. um, help to build generational wealth. And so I definitely yeah. let people know that, you know, it's great if you can work with an attorney throughout right. the entire process. You yeah. know, I know that people who, you know, who have the finances and they just don't have the right. time that so they would right. rather an attorney do everything. But then there's also people who want to be knowledgeable. They want right. to be a part of that planning process. And so, yeah. um, you know, they can do that. Um, I you know I also offer um, a trust planning course yeah. um, where it really does educate people on like, a, it's a 10 step program that just mm -hmm. really walks people through um, um, creating a trust. So you really understand the different parts of it. And then thereafter um, I off offer, you know, online, you know, resources, yeah. you know, whether right. that's, uh, I think it's at trustandwill.com. Yeah. And then people come back to me right. with their documents to review, and then they go off to notarize them. Fantastic, attorney. Hey, there's no excuse, really, attorney, for really to do the free stuff. Uh, I can do all the free stuff. Just Google. I mean, ask the right question. You, exactly. you will get the right answer, but do your research, folks, as well. Hey, we're talking to uh, attorney Cassandra Leslie Jones on the importance of a will and, and also a little process, of the, not the detail process, but kind of the over the overlook the pro, excuse me the overview process of setting up your will guys i want to tell, tell you ladies and gentlemen who are listening all over the globe because she is an international attorney as well you need to consider this you have to put this on your list of to do we're talking about a will uh that you need to have guys you need to think about it uh you know i want to ask you can you digitize it anyway uh, attorney can you like you, some people say well i don't want to write it out can you just put up a recorder and I can record it. Can you do that or video recording? Would that work as well today? You can also do, um, so yes, you can do audio. You can record it as well. Um, oh. Also, if you are doing like a written will, we do recommend our clients, you know, that you then, so you, yeah. you have your paper documents. Yeah. Make sure you give that to the people that need it. It's very, yeah. very important. 
you don't want the case where you've passed and everyone's right. searching for the will. Right, so, right, right, so, you know, right. you want to make sure you give to your executor, your beneficiaries. Gotcha. Um, and then also because we are in this virtual age, you know, there are great um, online um, encrypted vaults mm -hmm. where you want to also store your estate planning documents yeah. and making sure that uh, yeah. those that need to have have access also have access as well. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. Guys, there's no excuse. We just got to get it done, guys. We're talking about having your will uh, for you and your family, guys, and 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 all the above there as it relates to your children. Your, you know, it could be your grandma, anybody that you want to include in that will. So we want to encourage you today. And Attorney uh, Lynch is helping us, guys, to understand that. Again, we got to take action, though, guys, in this area. We got to take action. I love it. Hey, this is Power Connections, guys, with Kevin Vaughn and my awesome guest uh, there today, Attorney Lynch. Guys, hey, let's move to the next one of your favorite subjects, I believe, Attorney, uh, the Living Trust and who yeah. should have one. I love it. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, we want to make sure we also have um, at least a revocable living trust. So revocable meaning that you're able to change the trust. Um, um, yeah. this, uh, and so this is kind of this idea of uh, you hear own nothing, control everything. And yeah. so that is because now um, once we've transferred your personal assets into the name of the trust, the trust mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. owner of that property. Okay. Um, people name themselves as trustee as their revocable um, living trust for their revocable living trust. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that said, as trustee, you're able to still manage those assets, whether that's to sell or distribute, you can still yeah control the assets, um, however, but as, um, you know, trustee um, and with the trust being the owner of that. So um, that is the benefit. Again, the biggest benefit why people are creating a trust is to avoid that probate process. Right. Again, we want to avoid probate because it is time consuming, it's expensive, and it's a public process. So those are things um, what you want to consider, or if those are priorities for you um, as to why you'd want to create a trust. Um, right. Other reasons why we're creating trust is to minimize taxation. So whether that's estate taxes, um, we can do that by creating uh, different types of trust. Um, you've probably heard of um, irrevocable trusts as well. Yeah. Um, um, so what's different there is that once the assets are in the trust, they cannot come out. There can be right. no changes made. I hate to say never, but the general idea is that once you create an irrevocable trust, um, it's it's set. Right, right, and, right. and there's just a very high threshold to make changes. Yeah, uh, to that. Um, yeah. Go, I love sorry. it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, I was just thinking as a billionaire, you know, you want that thing to be as tight as possible. So you know, all that money we help make. Even though I'm gone, we want to make sure it's set properly there. And that's exactly. what we're talking about today. So, guys, this is powerful. And the living trust, and there's a, and the, uh, turn, I was trying to think, I didn't write it down though, but the living trust, and there's another trust that, I mean, is there, is there like a different? Well, yeah. So, you're probably thinking about testamentary trust. Is okay. That, yeah. So, here's another one. might be that trust. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so, living trust, that's a trust that we yeah. are claiming during our lifetime. Right, and right. The testamentary. It, so, just yeah. in its name, it's a trust that is within your will and it only comes into effect right. um, when you pass. Gotcha. Um, I will say we don't recommend these types of trusts. Um, okay. Uh, because they actually kind of frustrate the reason why we want to create a trust in the right, first place. Right, so exactly. A testamentary trust, um, again, it's only created once you pass. And so with that said, there can be no changes made. There can be <laughs> nothing yeah, done. Right, so right. That, that trust is um, already just set in stone. The other issue um, and the reason why people are considering creating trust is that, you know, we really want to keep the courts out or keep the government right. out of our right. affairs. Right. Right. Unfortunately, with a testamentary trust that is created by the court, right? Because the will has now gone to court. Right. And so now your trust is a matter of public record. Well, people right. are creating trust for privacy. So that's yeah, yeah, exactly. a little bit um, in opposition there. And then also because the trust is created by the court, it will always be subject to court jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine you've got a trust until so any time the court wants to look into the accounting of that trust, that attorney or that firm can go back to court, but who pays? It's your estate and your beneficiaries. They have to pay. So this is why we don't really recommend um, testamentary trust. I've had people come to me. Uh, I get people all over with their estate, estate planning documents. Like, oh, well, I was recommended this. And right. so I try to give other attorneys the benefit of the doubt. I just, and I work with a lot of small business owners. And I just suggest that perhaps that attorney didn't understand um, your 
entrepreneurship journey. And so yeah. it's just that a, a testamentary trust is very cookie cutter, you know. So yeah. perhaps if you're someone with a very small estate, mm -hmm. uh, very, um, you know, very few uh, assets and property, perhaps that would work for people yeah. in that case. So yeah, wow. I, would, I wouldn't broadly recommend testamentary trust, but yes, there are those yeah. two types of trusts, ones that we create during our lifetime and yeah. then ones that come into effect when we pass. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, attorney. Wow. I tell you, man, she's brilliant and a genius, man. I love it, man. That's why we have the right people on, ladies and gentlemen, on Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn, so we can bring you the right information and the proper information. Attorney, we got to transition into the business world. I love it. We have a ton of business owners all across the globe. They are entrepreneurs. They are geniuses. They're coming up with new business ideas. They want to start their business. They want to employ uh, thousands of people or hundreds of people in the future because their idea is getting ready to take off. So uh, we got to talk to our business owners and potential business owners today, attorney, about the importance of, of uh, tax advantages or just how to structure in this area and the importance of an attorney too. As your business grows, you're going to need an attorney, guys, to keep uh, you straight in some areas as well. But uh, attorney, I'm going to just turn it over to you as it relates to business owners, anything you'd like to share with us in that area. Absolutely. So it's really great being a business owner. You get a lot of tax deductions, yeah. tax credits. Uh, the biggest tax deductions you can get, of course, for your employees is their salaries and the benefits that you pay out. So definitely take note of that. Um, also tax credits. Um, so uh, the government is offering tax credits for certain groups that you're hiring, whether that be uh, veterans yeah. or disadvantaged um, marginalized right. groups. Yeah. So, you know, take that into consideration into your hiring hiring process oh, as well. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's something to consider. And then, of course, we've got our deductions um, that you have, you know, typical business mm -hmm. um, expenses, you know, so yeah, make right. sure that you're writing off those business expenses, you know, whether yeah. that's your inventory or, you know, if you're going out with, um, you know, clients or going out with other business colleagues, you know, um, writing off um, your, your meals, you know, um, you can take those business expenses as well. But there's a, there's a lot of um, business expenses. Again, they must be ordered ordinary and necessary um, to uh, your business. So that's um, sort of our criteria of how. Yeah, you yeah, that's very critical right there. That's <laughs> very critical there, attorney. Very, very critical. Matter of fact, while you were talking, I was just looking up one of the books that I had. This is a book that called, I think it was like at one time it was 495 tax deductions for business owners. I think it's up to 101. I'm sorry, 1,001 now. 1,001 tax deductions for business owners. So guys, look it up. There's books out there on what you legally can do. But one of the big things, attorney, I wanted to mention to the business owner, keep your receipts, guys. Keep track of everything that's a business expense. You got to be able to prove it in a court of law or just be able to prove it, period, to yourself even. So that's so important, guys. Keep receipts on everything and know there's the books out there that will help you. I think it's 1,001 now, attorney, uh, tax deductions that are available for for real business owners. I'm talking about people who are not playing those hustles and, and hobbies and stuff, right? We're talking about real business now. Absolutely. <laughs> I, you, attorney, I mean to interrupt you, but I wanted to share that with you. No, no, that's that's um that's that's great. And yes, please save those receipts. And I was gonna say, actually, I'm working with um, you know, a lot of my client base now is like yeah. sort of the new age content creators. Yeah, exactly. I got a lot of young, you know, entrepreneurs yeah, yeah, yeah. who are, you know, thinking about, you know business and also creating their estate plan, believe it or right, not. Right. But but even with them speaking um in the business sense is that you know um, people should also consider um software such as QuickBooks. Right. So you can easily now just take a picture of your receipt. Yeah, and then exactly. uh, put in, you know, the values and then it uploads into your QuickBooks. Um, right. So, yeah, so they've got apps for that now. So, yes, yeah. keep your receipts, but also um, you can use software as well to help you stay organized with that. Oh, I love it. Hey, guys, we're talking with attorney Cassandra Lynch, guys, on the uh, importance of uh, being in business, first of all, but also your tax advantages for being in business. And there's some serious one. I love that one about the, the people, your employees. That's that's good. I didn't know. I didn't. I guess I heard about it, but didn't really understand it. But about the employees, the type of employees you bring in, guys, veterans and, 
uh, disabled, things like that, you have tax credits. That's powerful, attorney. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. you guys can learn more about that. Hey, guys, I want you to go to the website. Just learn more about her as well. She is the expert here. I am not an attorney. Let me put that on there. I am not an attorney. <laughs> so, guys, she is the attorney. She knows some things that uh, we need to know about as it relates to business. This is part of our segment that we're on now is business owners. Wow, I love it. So, attorney, anything else as it relates to business that we need to know about in this area? Yeah, I was just going to finish off and say yeah. um, about self-employment tax. So, oh. you know, a lot of us, you know, we start up, we create yeah. our LLCs. But yeah. once your business gets to about the $40,000 range, you should consider um, yeah. transitioning into an S-corp. And so that's going to save you on the uh, self-employment tax. Yeah, uh -huh. so that was all the other thing I wanted to add. Yeah, that's great. That's a good deal. So, yeah, that why, well, why you're mentioning that, we're talking. So a lot of people start off. Uh, as self-employed, then they move to L LLC, maybe, mm -hmm. and then they yeah. move to a corporation or Inc. or whatever. So is that the proper way to do things uh, uh, pretty much far as uh, scaling up your business? You know, you normally start off with yourself and then you're making a lot of money or then you say, I'm going to get some employees and you're going to go LLC. You yeah. may keep the same name. Is that the proper sequence of things to do? Absolutely. Yeah. Even, you know, um, if you start a sole proprietor, yeah. sometimes we encourage a little sooner, you know, as soon as you yeah. make your first sale, think about, you know, um, go ahead and yeah. filing with the SOS and forming your business, you yeah. know, because that's just going to give you that limited liability protection. Right, right. So, yeah. so, so we, we encourage that sooner than later. Um, but then, yes, once you're an LLC, again, taking on employees but yeah. once you're you know and a lot of the time our, our small business clients they're able to really bring down their taxable yeah. income sometimes down to zero yeah. um, but once you're you know you're around the forty thousand dollar where you've not been able to write yeah. off any more essentially uh -huh. yeah. then go ahead and um, start to look at transitioning into the s corp because um, yeah. that's going to save you on the self-employment tax Oh, I love it. This is great. I love it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited here. I got attorney Cassandra Lynch on the network today, Power, uh, Power Connections, talking about, we've been talking about your will for your for your for family, for yourself. We've been talking about the living trust. We got educated there as well. And we're just finishing up, guys, on the business required, the requirements for our tax advantages for business owners today as well. I love it. Hey, guys, we got to uh, keep it moving here because attorney is busy as well. And we'll make sure we respect her time. You know, attorney, one thing we, we love to talk about is our young people, our young people who say, man, I want to be an attorney. You got some, you know, you got some young people who are still home with mom and dad say, I want to be an attorney, daddy, mommy, whatever. And then we got teenagers, then we got our young adults and those maybe are just getting into the law uh, and maybe those who are thinking about getting into law. But if you don't mind, can you talk to our young people today about this area? We're, talk we're talking about the young people that want to get into law. Uh, yeah, I understand there's different facets of law too as well. They can specialize, understand, and be broad, you know, get some other areas as well. But can you talk to our young people about this area of education, training, and uh, things that they could do uh, and uh, if they're interested in this area of business? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely, um, I say from high school, you know, definitely um, start considering if that's yeah. what you want to do as a profession. Yeah. Come on, guys. That's, yeah, because yeah. Um, the thing is that a lot of students, I can even possibly say myself, you yeah. know, we get to university and we yeah. don't know what we want to do. Right. And a lot of us lose a lot of time and right. money, right? Mom and dad's paying a lot of money for us to go to school. Yeah. And, you know, we, we don't know what we um, right. want to do. So, um, you know, definitely um, understand what you want to do and perhaps even during university you can understand what type yeah. of particularly but so that you can just be right on track you know right, right. a lot of universities they put you on a track right, of, right. Um, you know, your major and what and whatnot so um mm -hmm. i was like a political science major um so so this will help people um sort yeah. of stay grounded and understand that and then perhaps go on you know if you want to do a master's but you know once you finish undergrad you can go right on to law school yeah. um and and so from there so yeah. um just encouraging people to just kind of know what they want to do early yeah. on um yeah. definitely reading is important i know that sounds yeah. so yeah, it is. elementary it is. very fun yeah. Um, but but it's 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 really helpful. I, I I say that um we have we have two daughters, but our oldest who is five, she's yeah. been reading since 17 months, and now she's reading oh. at a third, fourth grade level. So it's just yeah. so important to um you know really yeah. introduce our children to these things early because now like she she reads everything. Yeah, and, like, exactly. it's, it's like second nature. So it's not like we're pulling teeth to get right. her to sit down right. to read 
So, you know, so important, um, you know, one, that we model that behavior. So, yeah. you know, if we want our yeah. kids to, yeah. to do something, right. we've got to be reading too, you know, right. the, the news and, right. you know, so that they can, you know, yeah. you know emulate us, right, essentially, right? right? right. So, yeah. Oh, that's honestly, wonderful. Wow, yeah. honey, that is so beautiful. Guys, did you hear that? You can raise your children up through reading, right? Mm. Proper exposure, right, in the area, just so they can get the information because they have to learn, right? They have to know. Uh, you don't. You may not know exactly, but the thing is you have to put them in a position of learning and mm. reading and writing, guys, is so important. Now, in fact, attorney, one thing we always talk about, too, is strategic planning today. Today, our children have to know how to strategically think, today. So strategic thinking is so important. And we, te we teach some of that on, on my side of the house as well. But but you got to have something in here, right? You got to <laughs> have some information in here. So reading is important, guys. If you want to get into the area of law, obviously writing is very important as well. And also too, you got to be able to work with people, right? Attorney, that's important too. <laughs> like You got to like people, right? <laughs> A little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's wonderful. So we thank you so much for that. Hey guys, we are getting ready to wrap up here with attorney uh, Lynch there, guys. Her website is so awesome. I want you guys to get, do more uh, research on her as well. Uh, those who have a media of any type, digital uh, television, you guys got uh, uh, organizations that need to learn about this, maybe even your employee base, guys. You can contact her uh, for more information and maybe have her come out and speak or do a Zoom, whatever she allows there. You guys can contact her for more information about these areas. We've been talking about the will, your will, living trust, and also to the business advantages, the tax advantages for being a business owner or entrepreneur. Very critical, very important. But guys, you know, information is so important today, uh, attorney. Um, information is so important. So you got to have the right information. And we want to mention that to you. Also, too, she mentioned about the family, your children, guys. If you have young people that you see, oh, yeah, they're going to be a judge, attorney you know, whatever, you want to be able to make sure you guide them in these areas through reading, through writing, and through exposure uh, in these areas as well. Matter of fact, attorney, I wanted to ask you, do you do any uh, mentorships uh, or internships as well right now for people, for those who may be interested in that? Do you do any of that? Yeah, I would be open to that. That, that would be a great opportunity. So yes, if yeah. you'd love to connect a family yeah. or students, that would yeah. be fantastic. And that is also very important. So yes, yeah. interning and, and yeah. actually, you know, um, particularly I can speak for Washington state. Uh, yeah. They have like a, a program where it's not necessarily that you have to like go to law school. You could actually right. apprentice, apprentice with an attorney. Oh. So you know, look for the different, you know, options yeah. that might be available in your state because, you know, yeah. law school is expensive. And so I know yeah. perhaps that is a huge undertaking for families. Right. Um, right. But, you know, there can be some other options to become attorneys yeah. within your state. Um, yeah. So if you already know, like, you know, if you live in Michigan and or right. listen to Washington State, because I don't know what they offer yeah. in Michigan, but, right. you know, your home is Washington, yeah. um, and, you know, you're you're born and bred and that's where you want to live out your days. And yeah, like consider yeah. the, I believe it's called the Rule 9 program. And you oh, could just, um, I think you apprentice for about four or five years with oh, an attorney. Wow. And then yeah. you can just go ahead and be admitted to the bar, of course, with whatever their proper procedures yeah, are. So, I yeah, love so there's it. a lot of opportunities and it's, you know, don't think that yeah. there's only one track, you know, if that's your yeah. goal, you can definitely achieve that. Yeah, I love it. Hey, also too, I love my teachers, uh, attorney. I love my educators, anybody in education, uh, those at the uh, teacher level course and higher. If you guys want to uh, check with uh, attorney to have her uh, at least zoom in, minimum zoom in to your classroom and talk about these areas to your students, guys, uh, I would highly recommend that. We do a lot of career planning, uh, attorney, uh, in our state of Georgia, and uh, we go to our schools just to encourage our young people to look at these areas. We bring in people like yourself that are attorneys uh, and talk about uh, uh, these areas of interest. Uh, and it, and it, we got some brilliant young people out there. I know that they've got a lot of questions. They want to know some things. And our goal really is just to expose them to what's available to them. That's really what it's all about. We just want to expose our children, guys, your, your uh, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Expose them to these areas of, of law and let them know they can be a lawyer. They could be a judge. They could be on the Supreme Court. Uh, one day if that's what they want you know but there's a process and that's what we help them with as well i love it hey guys if you're just joining us it's power connections with kevin vaughn and my wonderful guest today attorney cassandra lynch attorney i want to give you some final thoughts before we let you go there any final thoughts before we uh, wrap it up for today thank you so much 
Well, again, thank you so much, Kevin, and thank you for the work that you're doing in Georgia as well. Um, again, just want to encourage people to consider to create their estate plan. Um, creating a estate plan is going to be, you know, one of the foundational things that we can do to create generational wealth. You know, what yep. we don't want is every generation starting from scratch every time. Right. Um, so, you know, we want to, you know, make the, you know, I guess the, the, the load a little bit easier for the yeah, next generation. Yeah, exactly. So we can do that by creating our wills, creating our trust. And so we facilitate a smooth transfer of wealth to our beneficiaries. So this is why we're doing this. We're, we're doing this to give them a leg up. Um, you know, we want every generation to do better than the last. You know, my family is originally from the Caribbean. Yeah. And I'm so thankful my grandfather brought his wife and seven children to the U.S. to give me me, not just them, but me, the opportunities right. I have yeah. today. And so this is why this is really important and sort of probably also why I feel to do this work as well. So I feel like I, you know, I've been given such a great opportunity and I've got to also give that to others. Absolutely. What a great, great uh, area. I'm so happy that you're excited about it as well. That's the big thing. Sometimes you see people doing what they do, but they're not excited about it. <laughs> it's like, okay, why are you doing this? You don't, even, you don't even like what you do. It sounds like, you know, but attorney Lynch loves what she does. Hey, while she was talking, guys, I was just thinking, because we love the family, guys. We love the family and, and the structure of family. And I was just thinking, we have to communicate within the family, guys. She talked about the estate plan, right? That means it requires communication, right? That means you got to have some sit-down time, some dinner times uh, or, or, or FaceTime with the family and have this come up, guys. So if you need help and structuring that to start that off, Call the attorney and ask him how I want to talk to my family about estate planning. How do I start? And guys, you need to sit down and have that conversation and, uh, and, and have it structured where people understand what's going on because things come up, guys, that we don't anticipate and we got to be prepared to the best of our ability. So that's what attorney's here for. So thank you so much for that, Attorney Lynch, that we must plan well and be prepared uh, to do what we need to do for our families because so we don't have to reset every generation got to reset again again and it's only because we didn't do our pre-planning and then have the right person like you in in the system here so thank you so much for your time today wow i love Absolutely. it yeah as i say i also do offer for families if you need assistance you know just sort of facilitating yeah. those kinds of discussions i do family consultations as well so that is something oh, i can offer to families as well yeah yeah fantastic well attorney also too i want to extend it uh, another uh invite whenever you're ready if you got any information i know things change as far as laws and information may change in the future so you're always welcome to come back on Power Connections just to update us on what's happening with the family, with business, uh, you know, whatever you think is significant for us to know about. Because a lot of times you don't hear this on the news, folks. You will not hear all this information on certain areas, I guess. But for the mass media, you won't hear this detail about estate planning, about exactly. wills. You know what I'm saying? We know how important it is today uh, to know that information. So thank you so much, attorney, uh, for being with us today to share with us on that area. And guys, I want you to share this out on your platforms, okay? I want you to listen to it, take those notes, uh, go to her website, learn a little bit more about it, call her or contact her about your questions, right? Or, or, or comments or anything like that. Appreciate you so much in advance for that. But this is very serious, folks. The estate planning, the will, all the above. We want you to leave that legacy, as you mentioned earlier, uh, to your family and to those you love, okay? Hey, guys, we got to get out of here. Attorney, once again, thank you so much for being with us today. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Uh, All right, Kevin, you have a great one. Thank you, right. everyone, for joining. All right, thank you so much. Hey, guys, I want to leave you with this real quickly. Remember to always, always out-love, out-serve, and out-forgive each other. And remember, there's nothing you can do with the right information. Attorney, again, thank you so much for your time today. We'll see you next time, guys, on Power Connection. My wonderful guest, guys, is uh, Sister Cassandra, Attorney Cassandra Lynch, guys, on Power Connections. Appreciate you so much. Take care, everybody.